It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Alaja Nima Akasha Zibiri. How are you? How was your weekend? Fine. It's the first time Murayo is at Zibiri. Ah, no. Zibiri, Alaja Nima. Akasha Zibiri. Then go as far as Akasha and then... No, I always say Zibiri. I always add Zibiri. So Zibiri is... They don't recognize me. So I do. I'm fine, I'm fine. It was a working weekend, but... Yes, it was, it's it heard. very interesting. I'm glad. So I'm going to circles now where everybody will be like, ah, Nima, so you go out. I'll be like, ah, I do. <laughs> but I have to, you know. So we had Surah Complex yesterday for the if it's a Ramadan lecture, and yeah. everybody was like, I go out. I said, I, do, yeah. I actually do. So maybe after Ramadan this year, I'll yeah. try. You'll be more visible. It's about visibility. Yeah. yeah, it's important because about I believe that the Muslim community needs a representation. And if there's anybody who represents yeah. them, it's you. You do a fantastic Trust job at it. Me. So I think... They, they feel very, very proud of yes. the work we do. Yeah. The feedback was, tell Moriah, tell Moriah. On Saturday at Unilag, like, somebody particularly said, I named my daughter Moriah. And, you know, they were like, Aww. Nima, you're doing so yeah, well. I think, so, so they're I think, very proud. I, I think I'm, so, I'm also proud of the work you're doing in the Islamic yes. community, and I think you're doing a good job. So well done. Well done. Hello, Amaka Fresh in the building. I hope you don't mind me calling Amaka back, Fresh. I'm back, I'm back. You're dressing up for the fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? How is work? Thank you. Work is great. What's been happening weekend? What did you do um, this weekend? So I had a self-care weekend. Went to the spa, was Jesus marinated Christ. and steamed like a fish. It, 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 <laughs> marinated and steamed. <laughs> the experience really felt that way. Oh, it was you, relaxing. You so. need to take me to one of these, yours because oh, I have I, got a few. Yes. Well, I, think, I, I don't you get relax. the experience that you guys always talk yeah, about. So maybe okay. because I'm going to the wrong places, I don't get I don't feel, I feel, okay. I feel like they're intruding in my space. Uh, you know, I feel like it's the invasion of privacy. Some hands touch your body, you would rather just stay home. Uh -huh. So maybe yes. if I experience what you're experiencing, yes. I, mean, I will I feel... Up. Yes, uh -huh. so yeah, maybe we, should, we, should have a, we should have a spa date. Uh, we should have a spa yes. on this date. <laughs> yes. Mariam Longge, published author. How's our book doing? It's doing well, thank oh, you. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fine. Um, so at the weekend on Friday, I went for a wedding. <laughs> No, the wedding was a birthday. 60th. 60th. You saw it and ah. you left us here. You did not really? carry us. Did not invite you guys. Please, I so missed I did. did I not invite you? you did. Was it online? was Ramadan. The birthday. <laughs> um, Senator Larry T. Joshua's oh. 60th birthday. Oh, yes, nice. it was a lovely affair. I was just in them of the faux pas that happened to me. Um, so they had sent... Um, what do you call it? Asher Asher baby. Baby. Yeah, I saw it. And I sold it, and I wear, eh. and I wore it, and I went there, and I was looking. I just saw that. Everybody was wearing something different. Yeah. Hi. So yes, the head tie was the same as everybody, what I was wearing. And then I saw, like, the aids were wearing the same, hey, you know, whoa. like... You know, trust. Did you go back with the AIDS? No, why would I go back? Trust the supervisor. They didn't get the AIDS, and you had the same idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I didn't feel yikes. Yeah, yeah. I didn't feel yikes. I thought it was funny that you used to do that in class. So I thought, so I thought was. I thought I actually thought it was funny. I was going to say, well, you look quite elegant. I was like, yeah, I didn't feel anyway, but I just thought it was funny. But did you buy the actual Ashebi? It was sent to me. So I guess they sent it. Okay, I didn't get any more information. So. Maybe they, they actually will have, have a general ashebi at mm. Yoruba party. Which is the head tie. Yeah. Which was actually the head tie because everyone was wearing so that with whatever they yeah. would wear well, on their bodies. Really beautiful and elegant. I Thank you. I would Thank like to see the picture. I, 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 I had like <laughs> it was funny. quite a number of ashebi. They had start calling people. Please, can you take a picture of your ashebi and send it? Because I'm confused. <laughs> which one Which one belongs to you? I don't even know who is who, is who anymore. I have like four different ashebis on my head. I'm like, who owns which? And I'm calling them one by one. Please, can you take a picture of your own? I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm confused. I have like four parties coming back to back between now and end of April, and I'm but getting confused. I don't think so. I said, please, man, send me the picture so I can. <laughs> but weekend was nice. The, the exam Great starts this week. Exams oh, are starting. Yes. For the holidays. So, so, for the holidays. This weekend, we're just studying. Holidays, you know, doing yeah. a lot of studying That's this weekend. Good. I'm looking All forward right. to closing. Ah. Let's go <laughs> on a break now. When we come back, we look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Tinubu orders action against killers of 16 officers and soldiers. Mass metering of army formations with 12.7 billion naira begins. Experts list ways to halt rising inflation. Why Obale Kombalogun is great in Olubadon history. Huge turnout in Lagos food market points. Union direct varsity workers to begin strike. 
and Lagos to revive bid for special status listing of LCDAs. Okay, which story? So I have the mass metering. This one is good news. So the federal government has released part of the 14 billion marked for current um, for mass metering under this current administration. 12.7 billion has been released for the metering of the Nigerian Army formation nationwide. And you know, it kicks off on the ninth. Um, sorry, kicks off. At the head, they kicked it off at the headquarters of the Ninth Brigade in Ikeja here. And the Minister for um, Power was saying that it would be in phases, starting with the Ikeja cantonment, which is under the first phase. And they, at the event were plenty, plenty uh, dignitaries and uh, army officers. And they went on to say this was part of the 40 billion marked for that purpose. Also, the purpose of this metering, according to okay, what they said, the mass metering in army formations nationwide will enable us to know what is being consumed on a monthly basis in order to ensure appropriate billings and ease collections. And the overall intention is to eliminate and make estimated billings a thing of the past. So the people who suffered the most for estimated billing are the discos because Nigerian army, you cannot just come and bill them at the barracks. And so they had unpaid power cons uh, so consumptions over the years. I'm more than elated for this because we've always thought, why is people are living there? It's a very, very populated place, but you don't see the army barracks, you know, dealing with uh, payment of this. So now with this more fully prepared meters, you can have, you know, be able to keep records of what is consumed and how it is used and all of that. Uh, I say okay. kudos to the minister. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I have um, Nigeria's fiscal and monetary authorities need to reassess the strategy for combating the country's hyperinflationary trend. Um, to address fundamental causes of continuing increase in prices. So the National Bureau of Statistics at the weekend reported that inflation rate rose by 180 basis points from 29.90% in January this year to 31.70% in February. Um, the finance and economy, um, economy experts said there was need for reassessment of the balances between fiscal and monetary causes to improve the effectiveness of policy response to inflation management. Anyway, what the experts are really saying is that, yes, there are monetary policies that, you know, that have been put in place to help with um, inflation, but it is not enough. It needs to be balanced with some fiscal measures. Um, they, they call it like a cocktail of, um, you know, measures to bring inflation under control. Um, Especially, I got this, um, I would like to read this from the Managing Director of S Center for Promotion of Private Enterprise, Mr. Mood uh, Yusuf. He said that um, the key drivers of inflation include foreign exchange, global, uh, um, global supply chain disruptions, national security concerns, disrupting agricultural output, height, high and increasing energy costs. And he's saying, you know, to curb inflation, it would need government to address security concerns yeah. that's causing disruption in agricultural activities. So, yes, monetary policies are important, but there are some fiscal policies that need to be put in place to help, you know, boost economic activities and um, okay. slow down inflation. Okay, so I have unions direct varsity workers to begin strike. Um, it says the Senior Staff Association of Nigeria Universities and the Non-Academic Staff Union of Educational and associated institutions have directed their members to begin a seven-day warning strike today. It also says that the action was taken by the <laughs> Joint Action Committee. Um, and this statement was titled, The Commencement of a Seven-Day Warning Strike. And um, it's so unfortunate because the attention of this was brought to the Chief of Staff, mm. you know, of the President. And um, they were given ample time to sort these issues, to deliberate on these issues, to pay them their four month salary. The economy is really bad. Mm -hmm. Owing people four months salary, that's a lot. Yeah. How are they surviving? Mm -hmm. how, you know, how are they managing? Yeah. And um, so they decided to start, kick, um, start the strike today. Mm. It's a seven day strike. Okay. And um, I hope this, I hope, yeah. you know, this, just, this to give, way, yeah. Yeah, just to give context to that. So it is, you know, they had gone on strike one yes. time for mm -hmm. eight months. Yeah. So they had paid us to some part, from part, part of, of it. They, yes, so yeah. So that, yeah, just what what okay. is left. Yeah. But then, even if it's one month strike, if when you work, you should be paid. The economy is really before your, uh, hard. Your sweat you understand? And then this also affects you know, the educational institution, especially for kids. The yeah. disruption is too much. Yeah. Yes. So I, I just expect and believe the federal government should sort this out. So let's move on. Okay. So many of us know that uh, last Thursday, the Ulu of Ibadan. 
think that's the story. Yes, mm -hmm. Olubadon, actually. Mm -hmm. Olubadon <laughs> joined his ancestors last Thursday um, after two years on the throne. Um, many of you know there was a lot of controversy then during the time about two years ago. Um, however, one of the things that made him stand out as Olubadon uh, was the fact that he was probably the most educated ever in the history of that mm -hmm. store, according to um, this report. Um, many of the Olubadas in the past, most of them were never lettered or only fairly lettered. But he had a doctor of philosophy, PhD, of Babalogun, <clears throat> therefore became the, um, the most educated monarch in the history of the city. Um, he did not just acquire a PhD in public administration, he was also a lecturer at the Amado Bello University before venturing into politics and business. Mm. Um, so just to, just to show that he was such a significant leader, in that city, and he would definitely be sorely missed. Mm. Moving on now to the punch. <clears throat> Soldiers killing. Tinubu Senate order manhunt for killers. Troops come warring communities. FGI's $1 billion World Bank loans for IDPs and Greek. Strike. Sano Nasu vow to ground vastis. Government find ignorance. FG plans talks with Ghana, others to protect on the seat cables. Picture story here, consumers lament POS machine shot it at Lagos discounted food market. Abducted editor's wife cries for help, says her husband easy going. Textile imports, seven others gulp 1.4 trillion naira after CBN ban lift. And um, Senate warns against supplementary budget excess loans. Let's take one story before we go on a break. Okay, so in 2015, the CBN had categorized about 41 import items as not valid for Forex, which meant that importers of these commodities were forced to source Forex at black markets and, you know, at, of course, higher rates. And, and that put pressure on the Naira. But then the bank has lifted this ban. In, I think it was last October, the central bank lifted this ban, and it says that Nigerians... <coughs> spent 1.39 trillion on the importation of seven out of the 43, uh, 43 items earlier restricted by central bank. And um, they said the imported goods was 4.29 trillion in 23, indicating an in interest of 100%, um, 2.15 trillion from the total worth of 2.14 trillion commodities imported in 2022. Anyways, um, according to analysis, um, the, Ni the Nigerian foreign trade reports uh, says the items such as crude, crude palm oil, vegetable products, animal products, meat, vegetable fats and oils, rubber, plastics and textiles were all imported from various countries. They see this, you know, according to World Bank, they see that removing these import restrictions would lower prices of affected items um, by 4.7% and also lead to overall increase in purchasing power, which will in turn lift about 1.3 million people out of poverty. So the World Bank is saying it's a good thing to have lifted this ban and yeah. allow for the importation of these goods. And um, I think it will lift a, a lot of people out of poverty. I guess it will, it will bring about jobs, mm -hmm. you know, but then we're talking about how we can also improve our own local right. production. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's going to short break now. We'll come back and continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Let me take the human interest in punch. So, uh, Mrs. Oluatosin Olatunji, wife of the abducted editor of First News, Shegun Olatunji, has claimed her husband never mentioned any controversial story. Uh, if you recall, the story was that um, he was arrested or whisked away uh, from his Yanodua Buliek Balagos residence by armed men suspected to be soldiers. According to the assistant director of the public uh, relations, um, they, they did not respond to these inquiries sent to their phone. Um, also, according to his editor, specifically his boss at work, said that it is it's possible that this arrest was related to a story he published, uh, says, titled, Revealed, Defense Chief of, Sta Chief 
defense chief running an office like a family business, public interest lawyers published by many other online platforms. And also there was one another story, this exclusive, how contractor the company stole 100 billion naira laundered funds to top government officials, which was eventually pulled down. But reacting to the claim, Mr. Salatin just said that he knows nothing of these articles because he had he usually sends articles to her, um, so she reads it. But in these ones, she never knew that he wrote these articles, and she's quite, um, quite, quite really disturbed that her husband was arrested by people who were suspected to be army. Said, My husband's brother told me that his boss said he would be back before the end of Saturday. So now they've not seen him, and they're quite worried about the, his, um, his, his arrest. The arrest the of journalists which really agency is they can do an action. For him to come out, compelling them to release. release him. Okay, so we have, uh, I have the Unjeko. You know, food matter is our matter. <laughs> so Lagos had flagged off in 27 locations within Lagos State. Uh, subsidized food prices called titled Unjeko. Lagosians thronged the places on Sunday, and then they had issues saying that, you know, one POS per... Um, stand was not working for them, that they should have multiple POSs so that it will ease the cumbersome uh, process of payment. I do agree, but I don't expect it to be as easy as, you know, most people yeah. would. We had this experience during the late crisis. We should even be commending the state for, you know, first of all, the initiative. Yeah. And having it in 27 lo um, locations is, of course, showing the intention of the yeah. governor to reach, people, reach out to more people. So I think payment process, you should just maintain orderliness. Yeah. And it will get to you. But it's good feedback to the government yeah. also to, yeah. to get multiple materials. Okay. Yeah. Trust me, during late crisis, I saw this. People do not like to maintain yeah. order. turn by turn yeah. order. Turn. So you pay, and they have a tag process they're doing. So they tag them. You then go ahead, pay, and pick up. But you know, waiting and you're standing yeah. a lot. They don't like people. waiting. And the weather is so hot. It's, so it's outside. Yes. 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 yes, it's outside. People will be uncomfortable. Yes. And that's part know. of it. Yeah. Okay, so um, we all know what happened um, last week. It affected everybody. Um, you know, the, the digital space yeah. and the, well, with what happened with the Yemen people. So, yeah, so um, federal government plans talks with Ghana, others to protect the undersea cables. This is super important because <laughs> anybody well, can have affected. access to anybody. Yes. So the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Boston Tijani, has announced plans to spearhead a global collaboration aimed at enhancing the protection of undersea cables. Uh, this comment came against the backdrop of undersea cable cuts that has affected Ghana, Togo, Senegal, and other countries, West African countries. Recognizing the critical role these cables play in the digital economy, Tijani emphasized the need to review international laws and foster partnerships, especially with Ghana, with regional and global bodies too, to accelerate efforts to safeguard this um, vital infrastructure. Mm -hmm. He also um, commended um, networks like MTN, Globalcom, you know, their heads for really coming together in order to limit this impact because it would have really, yeah, really been bad. worse because people couldn't have access to their banking networks. Yeah. Nothing could be done. Oh, the yeah. banks shut down, Pretty basically. Much. And um, it's still affecting it, it's still affecting people. So he also said that to those experiencing this disruption, that we should please be assured that they are working with all key stakeholders in the industry to resolve the matter in the shortest mm. possible time. Okay. But no, I thought the minister was too quiet. I'm happy, I'm yeah. happy about that. Everybody according to their own area. Yeah. So, you think it's quiet? Yes, I've not heard from the minister. I don't think it's that quiet. No, no but not. they're working. Are you on they're Twitter? Working. Yeah, they're working. Yeah, they're working. Yeah, they're working. Yeah, they're constantly giving us updates. Yes, they're constantly giving yeah. updates. Yeah. And they're working on it. We don't see action. It's movement we are seeing. No, now the action, because you're, you're able to <laughs> log on my Don't mind Nima. They're working. Tijan is working. Yes, he is. Vanguard, Delta killings. Troops lay siege to Okwama, rage, raise more houses. FG, how FG funds petrol subsidy through crude sales proceeds. Lagos uh, um, residents storm food marts and make complaints. Devolving more powers to states will bring socio economic development, says Governor Mba. Why it's difficult to market Nigeria globally, says Obongata. Insecurity hampering food security, Catholic bishops, farmers raise alarm. Okay, which okay. story? So in the Vanguard, I took the sports story just because I found it interesting. So at the current African, ga um, African Games holding at, um, hosted by Ghana, Nigeria is coming second behind. Let me, there's a way sports analysts report their news. So Team Nigeria has showed up their medal haul to 27 gold, 21 silver, 28 bronze at the ongoing African Games in Ghana to consolidate their grip of the second position in the medals table. 
Nigeria's continental nemesis, Egypt, <laughs> have continued their unassailable <laughs> lead in the medals table with an astonishing 90 gold, 33 silver, and 29 bronze to suit the tag of unofficial winners of the games with the with the games just five days into the competition. And um, behind us is South Africa, of course, and uh, uh, Ghana is sixth, just to mention. Okay. Let me take this story by the former governor of Akwaibom State, Obong Victor Atta, um, said the weekend has been difficult marketing Nigeria to the international community for foreign investment to flow in and even to our exports to be accepted because of the persons who do is doing the marketing and using the wrong approaches. According to him, was speaking yesterday, I think over the weekend, during the um, uh, ceremony of the Institute of Certified Sales Professionals, he said specifically, he took a swipe, uh, he expressed sadness first, that most trips embarked upon by state governors um, ended up being jamborees, while little was achieved from similar trips by the presidency. He also took a swipe at when Nigerians stripped their leaders and the country naked in the build-up to the 2023 general polls, uh, he says one thing distinguishes February 2023 presidential election from others which preceded it was the election in which presidential candidates and their supporters spent more time in the character assassination of their opponents than setting forth their plans for governors. Um, he was really, I mean, he just went on and on the fact that nobody would take us seriously internationally because even those who are marketing Nigeria are not marketing them properly. You're not passing the right information and you're not having the right body language for international investment and acceptance of our exports. Maybe we should then look it in and leave the people Imagine. outside. Okay, the yeah. point. You have a story in Vanguard? Yes, I have know? a story in Vanguard. Right. So, um, <laughs> I know you're the food lady, but then, <laughs> let me help you out here. So, there's insecurity hampering food security. Catholic bishops farm and farmers raise alarm. Mm -hmm. So, at Oweri, the president of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Nigeria, Most Reverend um, Ugoji, had said yesterday that there's a, there's a quest for more food because there's food scarcity right now in Nigeria and hardship and people have been encouraged, you know, their members, the nation at large have been, um, have been encouraged to go back to farming, to take farming as, yes. uh, yeah, because, so yes. make, as a farm and produce what you can eat, yes. mm. you understand? So it makes sense, but then the issues they're having is the fact that um, there's insecurity because most farmers can't even get to their farms because most yeah. of this land, um, farm locations, are most, most of them are at the outskirts, oh, yes. mm. right? So with, well, with the kidnapping going on, yeah. most of them, when they get to their farms, people might have raised down or stolen some of the products that they want to have. So it's a problem. And they are begging and pleading with the federal government and the state government to do something about it, to protect the farmers so that we can have yeah. and um, to help to curb the uh, food scarcity. Okay, final paper. The point is final story of not taken. Insecurity, what Nigeria must do, differently says experts. As Nigerians grown, cement manufacturers record improved profits, hit 576 billion naira in 2023. Shocking confession of suspect who allegedly murdered woman seven days after employment. Mixed feelings greet move to uplift FCT to full state. And lady allegedly butchers father dumps cops in dustbin. What? I didn't even see that. I took the 24-year-old house help. His name is Peter. He was employed, um, they said, seven days after his employment, he killed his employer. Um, he said that um, the, the employer's name was Mrs. Shola Johnson, and she worked with the Lagos State Development Property Corporation in Lupeju. According to him, which I find very hard to believe, he says that um, on this particular day, he, she came home from work and asked him why he did not wash the undies that she had soaked in the bathroom. And he didn't say anything to her. And she asked him, why didn't you respond to me? And because he didn't respond, she slapped him. She started slapping him. And then he took a big stick and he hit her nearly three times until she died. He stole her phone and he ran away. Thankfully, the police were able to arrest him in Benin Republic. And that was when he made this confession. The reason why I don't believe his story is because they tend to always tell this same story about female employers, mm -hmm. about making them to wash their undies. I don't mm -hmm. believe that that's the case. Yes. I think he was just a criminal. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, the, um, the report also says that, you know, she left behind two children, one of whom was in school in the Lagos State University. He said he kept calling his mom. She, he didn't hear anything. So he came home to visit her. And by then, she had been long killed for, for days, you know. And that's how he met his mom. But um, she has a partner who has promised to make sure that he'll keep taking care of the children and make sure that they continue to go to school.
So let me read the story. The daughter who allegedly killed her father. So this happened in Udi local governments of Enugu state. They've been thrown into shock over the alleged brutal and cruel murder of uh, one of their retirees. According to the story, the retired school headmaster, identified, identified as Ruben Onyeba, was allegedly killed by his daughter, similarly identified as Ndidi. According to, according to the report, the reason for the butchering is not yet clear. Uh, but I could say the neighbors explained that the killer of the retired citizen used cutlass to sever his body and dumped his remains inside the dust. So he cut off the head and chopped off his hands. Um, said that when he back hill from Abia State, and uh, his wife said that he said he said that they were looking for him for about two days. Say uh, the landlord, the landlord Donald, was saying that um, the wife was looking for his the wife for his, her, for his, husband. her husband for about two days, um, and uh, they, didn't, they didn't. After a while, they searched for him. And then they discovered his corpse in the dustbin. His head and hands have been smashed and chopped off. And uh, indeed, the, the daughter has been the prime suspect. Um, the neighbors are also seeing what they can do. The police has made some arrest and uh, an investigation has, on, has started. But this is quite disheartening. Chopped yes, off her father's head and hands. And, like, what could have she's a suspect. Is the person bipolar or Almost, something? Uh, no. Okay, we have to wrap up. Let me see what time yeah. we have. Um, we have like final a, story. We, we can't like take it. Okay. Yeah, Tribune. The story that you want to take in Tribune now bring culprits to justice. Tinubu directs the defense headquarters and CDS. NJC raises alarm over alleged bid to defraud sorry, to, uh, retired judicial officers. Um, Lagos to push for special status and residents protest over house marked for demolition in the Madon Secular Road. Is there a story anybody wants to jump on? Okay. Um, yes, I wanted to Very jump. I, yes, I wanted to jump on the demolition of yes. houses. Right, um, people, <clears throat> residents are really upset about this whole thing. We all realized and saw what happened last weekend at Jack Day, for example, in Lagos State. Um, I, my cleaner stays in Jack Day. I'm the new driver that I'm supposed to you know, employ stays in Jack Day. And both of them, throughout last week, couldn't turn up because they were dealing with, they even sent me videos of them burning, that they didn't give them enough time, ample time, to bring out most of their properties. And they burnt, they, they sent me videos of them burning some of their properties. And it's so disheartening. It's worrisome, like these people are trying to survive and they're demolition and demolition. I think that the local government areas and people in charge of all this mapping, they, they need to sort out these issues before people actually build or mm. <clears throat> outside these areas because you're talking about people's money, people's time. We also need to, we need to be more involved about Nigerians' mental health, people's mental health. Right. Mental, when, health, is very mental health is very important. But well, it's also very important that. to conform have, with building approvals. Yeah. Yes, but that's yes. something that Nigerians... Yes. Yes. We, we can make it a hot topic another day, yes. but we have to wrap up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, Stay most with of them us. are rent house. We'll be right back. We can make it a Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So several houses in the coastal and rustic Okwama community in Bomadi, local government of Delta State, were on fire. Mm -hmm. Hours after 16 military personnel on a peacekeeping mission were killed, according to reports comprising of a lieutenant colonel, two majors, one captain, and 12 soldiers were killed by the youths. The unfortunate incident occurred when the troops responded to a distress call after the communal crisis between the Okwama and the Okuloba communities, both in Delta State. Um, since the reports we've heard from the president who has expressed um, his heartfelt uh, um, condolences to the families of, the, of, of, of those who have de departed and who have served our nation with all their hearts and might, and he has also given the, um, the military the full hand to fish out the perpetrators of this and bring them to book. But what are your thoughts on this? This is such a painful of that especially because these um these men these soldiers were responding to a distress call in that distress call from that community and these are our last line of defense these are the people that defend our nation they are the ones that protect us from these kind of heinous crimes so when they are attacked and killed it's a it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an affront on us as a people as nigerians what are your thoughts on this? You can call us on 081 0764 1679 
You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect using the hashtag UofUTVC so we can read your tweets. When you heard the stories, what came to mind? Let me start with you, Nima. When I heard the story, I thought, what audacity. Then, before, I, before I let you go, let me take the video. Let us all watch this package very quickly so that we can get a better context. The 14th of March killing of 15 military personnel who were on peacekeeping mission over the crisis between Okoloba community in Bomadi local government area and Okuoma in Ugile South of Delta State has attracted condemnation as the military continues to search for the perpetrators. The king of Ewu Kingdom, where Okuama community is part, has condemned the art by the youths. It is a very sad news what has happened. Um, first of all, I would like to state clearly that when this whole crisis thing started between uh, my community Okuama and the Ejo community uh, Okoloba, uh, I was in the UK at the time, at some point um, early this year, I believe. Uh, but I contacted the government regarding the crisis and the information they gave to me was that the government had invited both parties to resolve the issue and that in fact it had been resolved. The trouble between the two neighbors is not clear, but last December, the people of Okoloba community alleged that their neighboring Okuama community had invaded and attacked their farmlands, fishing grounds, and indigenous on several occasions. The traditional ruler, who is still in shock about what happened, condemns the arts. These military men, they are people who are there to protect our nation. They should be they should be held in high esteem. They are there to protect us from people who are there to invade and or to commit heinous crimes. It is very sad that these same people who are there to protect us, who are, who are one of us, that this kind of heinous crime will uh, be carried out and they will be killed in the process. It is very, very sad. It is that we have um, from the um, from the report uh, just to give you an, a context of what's going on what are your thoughts uh, when you heard the story so I thought what, what audacity and what an ingratitude to the Nigerian army I had um, a family friend who was on relief mission he had been posted immediately joined the army to Boma somewhere in Borno State he didn't die there he spent seven years there but the moment he was posted to the riverine areas in the south he was drowned, mm -hmm. and he wasn't a um, swimmer. He had a, a vest, and they were on the rescue mission like this. Mm -hmm. And he just drowning was what was explained. And Nigerian young guy, he had not even had kids. So the mom is grieving. And to hear again that Nigerian army on peace mission can come to an area, and the youth, because they said the community youth can be head, you know, an officer of the Nigerian army mm -hmm. in this country, when the army should, is supposed to be Defending us against external attacks, we are attacking them in, within the country for a peacekeeping mission. I don't get it. But I, it will not be the first. I will not act shocked that, you know, this, has hap uh, this is the first time, at least maybe for the Nigerian army. But the NDLEA cannot take a, 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 a mission to any of the farms of these drug peddlers in Delta State. It's those kind of audacity, those kind of high-handedness should stop immediately. If it is air and land and see surveillance that should end it, it should be immediate. I was having a conversation with my husband. I was like, why are you so angry about it? Because it is enough that we do, we deal with terrorists. It is enough. But when two communities, this is not just, just does it make sense. Yeah. I don't know what the youth consumed, but whatever they did consume, the consequence should be as grievous as what they did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for me, you know, it really touched me because, as you know, I have a special affinity for our military. I, know, I believe that, you know, they give, their, they give up everything to serve us. These are people that the moment they join the military, they understand that it may require their lives. And they are willing to give that up for the protection of Nigerians. And you would expect, you know, uh, a certain love Reverence, and yeah. loyalty towards them and then for them to be treated this way, doing something to protect the community. 
you know, and that's why for me, I, I, I also a part of me, I don't want to believe that these were just regular youths that did this. Could there have been some mercenaries, you know, hiding under the, the, the name of youth to carry out such a heinous crime? I, um, I just hope that, you know, that they are fished out, these particular youths that did this, and they are brought to book. But there's a second part of this story that has further broken my heart, which is that these communities have now been set on fire, and they are claiming they are unknown soldiers. Now, two wrongs don't make a right. I understand the grievousness of what has happened the first place where the military officers were killed, but by also now raising these communities, what, what you have created are enemies out of innocent lives. You know, there are people who are part of those communities who may not have known anything about these killings, may not have been part of it, have military officers as children or family members, you know. So to now put all these communities and set them ablaze, that is, is so wrong. You would just compound the issue. What I would have expected was proper, serious investigation to find out those who did this. And that would send a, a clearer message than just setting up uh, setting off a community. Although, yes, we still do not have who these unknown soldiers were, but I just hope it is not our military officers that did this because we have just further made this um, situation worse. Mm. Sometimes, some okay. people, I'll come to you, um, uh, Amaka, because mm. some will say some of these communities can be complicit. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't, mm. doesn't give them, yeah, you're right, mm. we should also put innocent lives, um, uh, we shouldn't put them at risk. Yeah. Yeah. However, sometimes, Communities are all complicit. They know of these people, and, and some of them have been yeah, What are your words. thoughts? Let me come to you, Amaka. When, okay. you, when you heard the story. So, firstly, I sincerely condole with the families of the slain soldiers. Yeah. Right? Um, you, you, the soldiers in Nigeria, the military—they are here to protect the nation. Mm -hmm. They will protect the military. They are human beings, irrespective exactly. of the fact that they have trainings, and then we. We feel that they are superheroes and they have superpowers. Yeah. But then we've seen now that they don't have superpowers, that they can be slain. And it's not as if they went to war. They mm -hmm. went on a peacekeeping yeah. mission to settle people that are fighting or they're having issues. Yeah. And this barbaric and despicable act happened on, that, on their watch. So you, you, let's not, you, as in, what, like what she said, what Miriam said, that two wrongs don't make it right, okay? But then you don't, um, they said they are unknown soldiers. But let's not also push people, you know, human nature, push people to now begin to, um, to, to have a high-handed way, attitude out of fear in order to protect themselves. Because with what has happened now, if you send um, soldiers now into another community or whatever, their attitude going, moving into that community is going to be different because they, they are moving with fear. Mm -hmm. This something might happen, we might be beheaded. Might be attacked, so you find out that the the, the mood, the 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 motivation, the motivation yeah. will be different. Okay, right. so this is really sad, and I and like um, Tilbu has said, the president has said that all investigation has given them the absolute power to yeah. investigate the issue and let the people be brought to. But because the community members, they know the bad boys, they know the bad people, they know the the, the groups, the yeah. the bad groups. But you see, you can't really win a war against terror if the people mm. who are affected are not willing to. To, exactly. There, there has to be a handshake yeah. between government and the people because exactly. even it's, 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 I also remember when um, U.S. sent um, um, I mean, to Iraq and you know you, there's only so much you can bring as an invasion. Exactly. The people on ground must be willing to say you, 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 you are involved. Mm -hmm. You are the ones who are doing this, and they must be willing to work with government because there's only all soldiers can do is blow up. Yes. But really, what we do, what we rather soldiers do is engage the community who are willing to be engaged. This is what they did. To... Now, on a peacekeeping mission, they didn't blow up. They didn't yes. blow up. They went into the community to try to get to the bottom of and they were an issue. Up. And let me report to you how the bodies were found. Yes. Said at the NDDC jetty at the Coastal Delta community, the bodies of the commanding officer and, two, and the two killed majors were seen floating by the mm. riverbank as others were separated on land. They found other bodies on land. Mm. Now, some of the corpses recovered were seen to have been beheaded while their stomachs and hearts of others were ripped off. Mm. Whoa, don't tell me anything. If I was the president, I would level that place. I went to military school. I had a classmate in JS2 whose school stopped the moment the father died on a peacekeeping mission. Mm. I met her recently and she felt too detached mm. because she didn't finish school. Mm. 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 Do you know how many lives end in the barracks because of these kind of things? Yeah. Don't tell, see. 
Those communities will never, mm. never, no matter how this investigation go, point to their sons yes, and, say, and daughters who are the youth mm. who did this mm. and say, this is the person carry and go. Yeah. That's how they did to the NDLE officers who went to a particular village in Delta State on, on, on a drug so uh, investigation so issue. Painful. They did not let one out of the 12 step out, 12 or 6 of them. They did not let one of, of the officers go out alive. Leave. Every single one was killed. killed. This kind of audacity must stop. It must be, the consequence must be as grievous yes. as, as what, what has they happened. did. Exactly. So, even this king that was talking in the video, he went to London, Okabo, mm. you, you, you know, he must name names. Or, you know, there will be consequences to his throne as well. So, because the, the, the issue, the consequences are even higher. Because mm -hmm. we don't, we're trying to get Nigerians to believe in the military. Mm -hmm. we still, we're still healing from the, the answer. We're, we're, still believe, we're still healing from mm -hmm. the role of the military, military in yeah. our entire democracy. Exactly. Even while this president is, 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 in the, is on his on stool, um, people are saying, ah, would there be a coup here because, they're because mm -hmm. we're still trying to understand the integrity of the military. Mm -hmm. So, when this happens, it sends a strong message that the nation is in, 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 unable to defend itself. Exactly. And the reaction, therefore, must show mm -hmm. capacity on the hand to show exactly. that we can actually exactly. defend this nation. Yes. So, exactly. the, but in, in doing that, we must also remember innocent lies. lies. No, if you are innocent and your community has beheaded military, even if you do not see you the body, come out. You, hear, you leave the community immediately because you know you should know that the consequence will be big. Mm. It is in history that nobody they kill soldier. There will be consequences. It's not even in Nigeria. It's not the first time. If you have the, you have the liver to kill a soldier, your, your, your child or cousin or brother has the liver to do this, you will be in relative, supposed to don't run. If you remain okay. there, Let me come be to Jamaica. You're going to say something. Yes, I want to say that if um, for people that are go the innocent lives that are affected on and will still be affected yes. by this, then you should man up and then point fingers. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Very so if, if by raising the community, community down, they start, um, people, the uh, little children or women get caught up in this whole, in this madness, what happens? So, you, so if, 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 you're, if you're the mother or the father, you're not going to point fingers, you're not going to call out the perpetrators of this wicked and hideous crime. Mm. This is terrible. Something has to be done. Somebody's so, father. So I have a call. I'll come to you, Mariam, in a second. Good morning. Thanks for calling. Hello. Good morning. Yes. I am calling from Agbado, Jay. This is my fourth caller. Welcome to the show, first time caller. <laughs> yes. yes. And then, uh, first of all, I want to talk about this issue of this army. This, uh, the, the issue of this army people, our this, uh, what are you calling me? Is totally, totally wrong. Let's say the truth to ourselves. Army, they're protecting us. You are seeing there's a, there's, a, there's a problem in Boko Haram bandits. If these people send them there to a rescue us and they send these people to, go to, to this death or whatever, whatever we're calling them, and they are killing them. It's totally wrong. It's totally wrong. It's, it's a nonsense. And this was so lucky. The, 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 the former president of is, is on the show. I know what will happen in that, in that place. Obatoto will send the army to level that place. Let's see what happen in this country. What kind of country is this? Mario, I, I support Lima. I was watching your program for over 10 years now. All of your fans. I saw one liver because I see the way the liver was talking there. Maybe she was a lawyer. That's what was doing like that. Let this was our face. This kind of country is one of the stupid people. Is, is, is these people. I was so very annoyed with yesterday. Thank you very much, Biodo. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, I understand the anger. I understand the emotions. But also, I understand being an innocent person caught up in between, you know, mm. this sort of fight. And I hate for any one of us to be an innocent victim in something that has nothing to do with us. And I'm speaking yeah. for those people. Yeah. I'm saying that I understand that it's unfair, it's not right to behead and dismember military officers <laughs> for doing the right thing. I yeah. get it. But I also know that there will be people in those communities who had no, had no hand in what has happened. And um, these response usually that we see it's not this is a big one but we've even seen it in smaller cases and we have called the military out in those instances why then are we not calling them out in this particular um, instance so we've heard of situations where a police officer fights a military officer before you know a military officers will come and beat up police officers or yeah. say you know these are things that we've always called call them out on and say there has to be a better way of dealing with things like this we are a country we are not a jungle a, a serious crime has been committed. 
No doubt about it. But because we're a country, and because every life is important, the lives of the military that we're taking and the lives of innocent people in those communities are just as important. That is why we have to follow due process. I, be, I agree that if someone kills a soldier, everything has to be done to fish them out. But not by leveling communities, not by destroying lives and property even further. What you do is now create even new enemies. So you have a group of enemies. You now level the whole place. You now create enemies. Mm. Children who, the story that they have is, we're sitting down quietly in our homes and the community came and destroyed our land. Came and destroyed our livelihood. Yeah. And that is the story that they will carry on. That is not what the military wants. I understand the military wants to send a warning that you dare not touch a military officer. I get that, but they have to find a different way of doing that. Right. So we don't compound the issues, mm. and that is what I see here. Let me take this call and I'll come to you, Akmaka. Good morning. Thanks for calling your live. Uh, I have a different opinion. Uh, Alaga, God will bless you. Allah will bless you. We will go to Makare, so we will support you from you. You have spoken everything I wanted to speak. Uh, very uh, please, can you down tone? Cool down, cool down. What is property? When life is lost, those soldiers have children, they have wives. I want the army to level the two communities and build army barracks in that place, an army school, for their own children or their own family. So what is property? Some say property. When life is lost, what is property? Eh? They kill our soldier. It's a disgrace. They are saying it in UK, it's a disgrace to, 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 to our country. Who are they? And they kill our soldiers just like a like teaching. If we lose our soldiers, they use to you are not safe. If all we die, they will slow to kill you. So Elijah, please. Allah will bless you, like I said. Yeah, it's always good to see different all circles of the story. Let me come to Yamaka before I begin my Okay, so irrespective, irrespective of the fact that I'm really upset about this, right? But then I'm a lawyer, and then we also <laughs> need to, regardless of, like she said, Miriam said, like, um, it, um, a crime has been committed. No matter how hideous that crime is, due process still has to be followed. And um, for the fact that the president has given full support that an investigation should be carried out, and these people fished out, um, the law says that innocent until proven guilty. So we don't even know if this is a sabotage from people from other communities for, mm. to, do you understand? Because mm. there's a war going on here. Anything can happen. You know, as a lawyer too, you yeah. know that people frame people up. Yeah. Communities can frame communities up. Anything yeah. can happen, yeah. right? Okay. So um, before taking actions, I know we're all upset about this yeah. serious crime, but let's give them time to investigate. Let me say you know, you know well, I'll come to you. Like, one, sec, one second. There was an angle I was going to take, but I thought I have a, a caller. Elijah from uh, Ikotun, thanks for calling your life. Oh, Elijah Babatunde. Yes, thank Go you. Go ahead, please. Much. Yes, first time caller. But, uh, Welcome to the show. Time, yes, long time uh, uh, lawyer. Uh, um, for the first time, I um, disagree with Miriam, my number one contributor. Uh, for the first time, I disagree with her. And I am agreeing totally with Nima. See, it is easy. When they are carrying a dead body, I go, you say, oh, see one person is carried. But when that person is your relation, you say, oh, so so person is being carried. There's need for all of us to have one voice and condemn this thing that is just unimaginable. You see, I have a friend, childhood friend, who had been private school, secondary school, state university. This guy went to the University of Lagos, one of the best guys, and John Foley. He was the area commander for Jebo Day, Omolojo. This guy was killed where there was a communal clash, and then he went there, you know, to make peace. This guy was killed by the youth in the area and set a blaze. In Jabu Mushi here, in Ugu State, here, an assistant commissioner of police was killed just like that. If I am the chief of family staff today, by the special grace of God, those communities... Thank you, Elijah, for today. So I, I, I get that, you know, <laughs> because I, I, I've always said something that where we are as a nation, you know, it's not the same way the, the entire world is as a nation. Um, this happened, many of us know, the, the World War II, uh, when U.S. Dropped, they dropped an atomic, atomic bomb mm. in, is in the Hiroshima, Hiroshima. Nagasaki, mm. where everybody was blaming them because mostly people were killed were children and civilians, mm. not even the enemies they were trying to achieve. Mm. So there's a, there's a time where when you do that collateral damage, People don't care what is 
who who are those who are um, affected as the, the point us was trying to make at the time was that you cannot be a, you, you cannot you can you cannot you you, you have, they have they have to let japan know where they are as the world as the as the world leader at the time so i get the 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 the, the point the statements of saying will blow up the entire place mm. however we are not in 1945 during world war ii we're in 2024, where we also must consider no, human rights. Mm -hmm. We are also, we're not, we're also, we are also consider... What we are saying is that no, nobody should exist. That community, whatever business those people are disguising on that, should end. Raise it down. Let nobody stay there. If you know your life is important, you have to leave. You should have left already. Mm -hmm. Then they end that. Mm -hmm. there's no, there should be no Okoama that will be on record to have killed 12 soldiers or 16 soldiers. That's mm. the point. Nobody's saying innocent you know, people should all be killed. Wipe it out. Because what you don't want to hear is that the van these youths are vandals who, who are in the business of stealing our commonwealth as well. They are probably protecting some bigger criminals somewhere and doing this and saying, oh, a Nigerian army has come, we'll make it impossible for them to come. As they have made it impossible for uh, NDL officials to stop drug farming in those communities, in some communities in Delta. In fact, the president should just declare a state of emergency, let the governor go on a break, and let the military take over the state. Maybe we'll see better. Because yeah, I don't get have, it. Yeah, that's that's even better. better. That would have been much better. Yes, let's a state, state of emergency, emergency in those communities and, and the military presence the fully in those... In house. I can't hear anybody. Yeah, and military fully in those communities, mm -hmm. yeah, making me... sure that, you know, they are investigating as they are in those communities. Yes. I don't support the raising of whole community. I do not. Let me take this call. I, I do not you. because they have been... I'm so sorry. Okay. This call has to hold on a bit. <laughs> if you have been in situations where mm. there have been clashes between communities and you are an innocent victim, and see, you would not ask for this sort of um, one blanket um, violence mm. against people mm. because there are some people that do not deserve it. Mm. There are some people who their family members are part of this military. They have made sacrifices for Nigeria as well, but they are caught up in these communities and everything is gone. For, those, for the sake of those people, what does it mean to be... I mean, what's the reward for being an innocent person? For being complicit. For being an innocent being person complicit. in a community that you find yourself. For being complicit. Many things will happen, even in, at country level, where another country will come and raise uh, another country, yeah. and you find that there are innocent people within a country. For that is what we are speaking against. Complicit. We have to find a different way to yeah. send a message to people about respecting the military. What if it's ineffective? Without, I apologize. We have to find it. I have to mention wait, his name. Wait, wait. I'll have to mention his wait, name. Mm. Bayo joined the army very young. Younger, he, he wasn't even 40. And he was drowned. And it wasn't this magnitude of a crime. And so all the soldiers left, were saved, and he was left like that. But come and see his family today. So when we talk about this thing, people live in those communities who will say, now only one person, they're kin now. They, you cannot, you cannot um, allow Excuse. this yeah. under your watch. Vandalism thrive under some people's watch. Some people make money and say, okay, the money, they, now I'm, come on. So my picking bring up. You know, when we excuse this kind of things, there will be no fear. They've, what they have done now is put fear in the hearts of uh, uh, military officers. They motivate them. Yeah. They will be afraid. They will think twice next time when they are posted there. Some will now call, question their uh, bosses for even posting them. Okay, let me, then, let me take a refer. Come to America. Good morning, Real Fair. Thanks for calling. You're live. Thank you, Mariah. And good morning, ladies. This is my first time of calling. Welcome now, to the show. Um, I have this to contribute to um, Nima, you have to take things easy. Okay, let's just look at this, you know, what happened last year. I think last year, last year, when the military basically bombed the village. Do Nigerians bomb or kill the military, like all the military in Nigeria? Do we um, um, burn all the barracks? No. See, there are bad eggs. There are bad eggs in that community. Fine. It's not, it's not when everything, everything is being raised down. No, that's not done. That's not done. Have you forgotten about the Niger Delta religion? No, see, I'm not trying to escalate anything. I'm trying to bring that bad, bad, bad thing that happened in part of this country. No, but I think you're talking about raising down a village, nothing should exist there. You should be told, no, that's not the, that, the, the, that's not the solution. No, no, everybody makes mistakes, and we know and we know the country where we are. The, the military at times, yeah, they do things to the extent like every time this they do. Okay, fine, the case is still in court. Who are the only ones here that raised down the village? Do we think that the dead will bring back the village alive or raising down the village completely? No, that doesn't make sense. You know, to me, 
So I have to go on a, I have to go on a short break or if I'll come to you and Maka after the break. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing this really um, hard, painful story of 16 of our gallant officers that were murdered in, um, in Delta City. You're going to say something, Amaka? Yes, I wanted to say something that, you know, I keep emphasizing on the fact that, that this is painful, but you can't um, respond to violent acts with more violence. Like you mentioned, you rightly mentioned, we live in a civilized world and a civilized um, society. This is 2024. Um, all other options should be explored first. This should be like a last option that, okay, we didn't get justice for the families. Um, they couldn't fish out the perpetrators and then the people now got angry and then decided to raise down communities. You don't just wake up and start raising down uh, communities <gasps> and start raising down um, a state or a country or blow up. No. Yeah. As in... <laughs> well, the military itself yeah. is a is a violent war, it's, it's created for such. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the role of the military to defend, and they have ammunition, they have arms, and that's a part of the tools they use to defend communities. Mm. Now, it's not just about those communities, it's about the message is sent even to the larger Nigeria, yeah. that can this entity called Nigerian army defend us? Can we do it, can we, can we does, it, does it affect the integrity? So their response at this time is crucial not even just for the community or the neighboring community, but to the psyche of Nigerians. Like, can we, because right now it's looking like the, whoever it is that killed these people have the upper hand. They are, well, able, to, they are able to defeat the our military, which is the entire integrity of the Nigerian army. The, yeah, the yeah, chief of army uh, defense staff statement is that they are, this is being investigated. The army has not owned up to raise in the community. Okay. Yeah, but can I so say you cannot say for a fact, sorry, yep. Amaka, mm. that you know, the army was behind the raising of the communities. Mm, okay. It could also be a cover up of this, of evidence by the community. Oh, we don't do, we don't, ah, okay, quickly. Everybody leave, 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 destroy. It could be them. And this community also. It, yeah, could, it could be, could be but the military has not stated that. And okay. they are the unknown gunmen. Unknown mm -hmm. men have oh. cost us a lot of things in this country. Mm -hmm. We cannot. Uh, okay, I have, no, a, story, I have, a, okay. I have a call up on play to no. still come to you. Mm. Uh, good morning. Um, oh, I think I lost that call. Go ahead, Maria. Yes, I was going to say that. Hmm. As a world, as the world, we're here talking about Israel and Gaza and Hamas and no Hamas. We woke up to news of some Palestinians having um, killed or, you know, and kidnapped some yeah. Israeli youths. And since then, Israel has put fire upon fire yeah. on Gaza. Yeah. And the cries that we hear from Gaza is there's a difference between Palestinians and Hamas. Israel is saying, as far as I'm concerned, Hamas all is, you. all of you are the same. And we have strong voices here in our country that have spoken against Israel. And what are we saying here? What I'm saying, right, and I'm going to say it till the end of this show and forever, we have to find a different way of dealing with this. The number of innocent lives is enough. Nigerians have gone through so much. Innocent Nigerians keep suffering for the ills of the wicked. The wicked keep getting away with a lot of things. That's what I'm saying. Give the innocent people time, space. Let them thrive as well. The soldiers that were killed, the innocent soldiers, they did not deserve that. I get it. Now they have left families behind. I get it. If we do the same on this side, innocent families and everything to be left behind, why do we want to compound issues? My problem is we are compounding the problem. Mm. We have to solve it. And in solving it, we need to minimize, you know, who the, it, the numbers of people, damaged. the people that are involved in this case. Minimize the collateral. Do we understand what we're saying? We're talking communities. Mm. I'm not saying they went on a particular... They're not saying they went on a particular street. Mm. Communities. Mm. Do we get it? Let them just enter Surulera and just raise it. That is a community. Mm. Or enter Ikeja and raise it. That's what I'm talking okay. about. So maybe sometimes so we just see hearts and we think it's just one or two hearts and they are moved away. No, these are lives. Yeah. Livelihoods, innocent, and I'm talking about the innocent lives. The Nigerian military can 
tier, the Nigerian military can find who these people are. They have done even bigger investigative work than this. This thing that has happened is more about sending a message. And I get it. It's to say, don't mess with the military. Yeah. And I'm saying, is it, should we do that at the, at the cost of in innocent lives okay, and property? Point, point That's mine. OK, yes. what I want to say is this. And in response to what you said, that um, the, uh, the, military, the, the military, they have um, the, their machines and everything, and they need to send a message. Do you know you can be so powerful and you send the message in a different way? Right? I hold you to high standard if I give you a gun, if I give you ammunition. The, the Nigerian army should be held to that high standard because they have weapons. Are you trying to tell me that whenever the Nigerian army, that, you know, their duty is to protect, whenever they are provoked or some, what things will happen? Yeah. That they should just blow up everywhere or maybe, okay, they haven't, you said that they haven't taken responsibility for this, but, you know, okay. they should be held to high standard that you can't just act because you can act. When these situations like this happen, you take a step backward. You think, you investigate. The Nigerian army can fish out every single person that was involved in this barbaric act. It is easy. nothing to them. Easy. It is easy for them, mm -hmm. right? So, irrespective of the fact that um, this has happened, they're saying unknown gunmen, known gunmen, whoever, <laughs> right, that did this. If it's not the Nigerian army that retaliated in that manner, even the people that killed the soldiers, the people that also raised down the communities, everybody mm. should be brought to Let book. me take this comment. I'll come to you, Nima. It says, actions, uh, actions carry consequences. When offenders are not punished, people's hearts are schemed to wrong. Yeah. What were they thinking? If you bring maggot-infested firewood into your house, ants will come. What happened is despicable and unbelievable, killing soldiers in that number. So there's anger in the land. People mm -hmm. are really upset. Mm -hmm. Now, they, and, and, I, and I hear, Mariam, I think you have a point that innocent life shouldn't be the price we pay. But when you're talking about communities who are maybe unwilling, willing or unwilling to help, because when you say, I want to investigate, I can only investigate if you're willing to offer me information. There's only so much I can get based on what you're willing to do. So I'm also seeing the parts of, we have tried to investigate so many things. People have, soldiers have been killed in so many situations. I'm trying to remember the other one where it's, um, one of the, we, we lost a soldier. It was practically murder. I can't remember what it was, a few years ago. Mm. Investigations are still ongoing. And even till now, we don't know, we, we, we don't know the, who the culprits are. So sometimes you feel that, and I think our president, our former president has said it, that things are different in this dispensation. But when he was a military man, he, he, he could do and undo. But now he has to follow due process. Things are different now. So there's always that two sides. Like, what do we do? Do we follow due process and do the investigation? Or do we do what military, military men do best? Blow, blow up the whole place and get and get and, and military get military has solution. intelligence. So military has intelligence. Uh, our military is not a they are not cru, just it's not a crude military. No, I know they have we, intelligence, but sometimes <laughs> investigations can sometimes be sometimes these can things be, is not about intelligence, it's just about as everyone has said, it's about anger. sending a message. Yeah. It's not anger, it's sending a message. And I'm just saying that this sending a message, we have to okay, find so a different way. So these boys have sent a message yeah. to the Nigerian government by killing 16 military officers, not just men soldiers. You know, they started from the highest from cadre. The highest. And they killed military officers. They sent us a message. Which message are we sending to them? A demotivational one. Yeah. I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong. I completely agree with what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. But sometimes, strong hand, strong hand back. Is, well. is what would deter. I'm looking at the most deterring consequence so that no community... You know, I referred constantly to the NDLEA one. Yeah. I know that one. I had first-hand information about people affected. And I thought, ah, ah, why in Delta? And then this happened again in Delta. There's crime being covered up. These military officers were made scapegoats. Mm. If you don't have a deterring consequence, we will not only demotivate and encourage the, the criminals, we will demotivate people in the barracks. God forbid mm. that the people in the barracks start to bring out what they hide under their beds, what is licensed to them, and start to do a reprisal to, so that civilians can feel what they're going through. We cannot have this in such a way that, uh, you, don't worry, we are we're on top of it. In three months, we are still on top of it. They have not found them. No, I'm saying, we've seen investigations take forever. Where were those who killed those NDLE officials? What happened to them? They continued their businesses. They still sell the whatever forbidden uh, uh, criminalized uh, items that they farm. 
They still grow them on the land in, in Nigeria. You are supposed and to grow okay, them. Going okay. with your, your thoughts, would I'm we say, saying, no. what if the, the criminals that did this, the perpetrators of this act, you think they were sitting down in the village for it to be raised? Mm -hmm. You think they are not long gone? Yes, you have not solved the same thing. Like, you have so not solved the issue. issue. Military is on ground. They will not be but, able to but, come but back. The fact that they were you want them to come back. And oh, I so it was premeditated. Men, Somebody men actually bad. called them yeah. okay. and then did this to yeah. them. This, this, this itself is quite heavy. Mm. Yes. And it's not something that one person or just a group of people can do without mm. community That's having the, some kind of inkling. You're yeah. right. So, so they, the they, somebody should have alerted yes. the security officer or that officials also. Happening. Let me take this call and hold it for a while. Good morning, Oloye Day, I believe. Olori Egbe, yeah, thanks for morning. calling. Yeah, good morning, Miriam. Nima and uh, Mawaka. Yes. And the other, Amaka, uh, good morning. Uh, today, this is my first time caller. Welcome to the show. All right. Um, what I want to say, you see, what Nima is saying is correct. What brought Nigeria to this level we are today is because we don't take action when things happen. We don't take action. That is why we are here today. You can see every time, everybody, criminals are everywhere. Nobody is doing anything. That is what is happening. I am an Edo man. Nima is my sister. We are from Seven Edo North. We don't take nonsense. I don't know they take last, carry last. If I'm an if I'm if I'm in the show of Chinubu today, today as I'm talking now, that place is gone forever and ever. It will be. Thank you. I mean, mm. one of the things I like about this show is that we're able to see different views and different perspectives. Mm. So there are people who believe that mm. even if it's one child that is saved, mm. that, that even if it's one family that is innocent, they deserve a life to life because they, because they live in that community and they shouldn't have died. Mm. Others are saying, listen, we, we, the entire community is complicit because there's no way those boys or who those youths had carried out in the, 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 those actions without somebody knowing or having an idea. Mm. And they should have actually alerted the security operatives on this. But either way, this is a really painful development, and I'm happy that the president has spoken um, immediately. I like the response of the president. I'd like to take a few comments before we go on a on break. Uh, he's not happy with me today. He says, poor villagers yeah. shoot at themselves and burn houses to cover evidence. Anyway, fair point. Ami has this owned up, even though it sounds right out of their playbooks, but you should extend their magnan uh, this magnanimity to the communities. The general says... He drew a map of the, the area and he says um, the ritualists will not go to Bayosa, that's the long green line, because it yeah. is Ijo. The, the army should focus on northern Ugeli, which is Urubu. These odds are likely hiding in the swamp forest between Ugeli north and south. Um, well, you see, the bigger picture, Maka, is the mm. fact that... <laughs> This is, these are oil-producing communities. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is where Nigeria's wealth is. And there are bigger consequences for these actions. Mm -hmm. Not just the fact that they killed the 16, but the fact that we, our, our, our commonwealth is vulnerable to these mercenaries, mercenaries or to these yeah. militia. Yeah. These are people who have, they, they, are probably, they probably have sophisticated weapons, mm -hmm. who are able to defeat the our military. military. That in itself is an affront on the nation. Imagine if one. Imagine if one. But they killed I both these people. these people. Imagine if one were to run away. That one person, Miriam, don't, don't yeah. be upset. That one yeah. person who feel emboldened that I kiss soldier, nothing happened. We'll continue that. They will not get away. No, you So they will not get away. This is what I'm this is what I'm I'm trying to say. See, our military is is tough. Our military is highly intelligent. Our military is you know, highly mm. equipped. Mm. I believe that they can do an investigation and, um, you know, and find out who these perpetrators is easy. Mm. Uh, perpetrators are. The crime that was com committed is a crime against Nigeria, mm. Mm. you know, by these mm. mercenaries or whoever they are. And they did not defeat our military. No. They cowardly ambushed our military mm -hmm. and they did what they did. And I mm. believe that our military will not rest until they fish them out. I would say again, I reiterate that whenever the military wants to show, a force, um, show their power or send a message, remember that there are many Nigerians like me and so many others who are constantly praying for the military, who are constantly supporting and being loyal to the military. And sometimes we find ourselves in communities that, you know, they are doing things. What do you think about us? when you do this um, show of force. That is what I'm asking. 
Do you think about innocent Nigerians who support you, who are prayerful for you, who are loyal to you? They did not, they did not defeat the military. They just cowardly um, were able to attack a few of you. And I pray, you know, that we find these people. Okay. I'm we have to wrap up. Let's take a few more comments. Show me that before okay. we wrap up on this. Um, just a moment. So uh, Kizu yeah. says, Alaja, I thought you were an attorney. Sensible people want the perpetrators brought to book, but bringing down the community because of a few is not fair. I hope you have the same energy when it comes to Israel and Hamas. And Israel and Hamas is very, very, it's clear in history. I laid history here. I did. I talked about how this has been the, 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 the uh, fate of NDLE officials and how we have not been able to fight drug uh, peddling in this country because of that. Because a community can kill an official of, or mm -hmm. an employee of government coming mm -hmm. on, on assignment and nothing will happen and they'll carry on their businesses. They have their areas fortified. They have yeah. their own personnel. Weapons big enough to protect it. Mm. It because the consequence never happened. I know okay, what I'm we saying. Have, we have to it's wrap not up Amazon. This, you know how once I'm again, about our hearts go out to the families of those who've lost their lives. And we hope that indeed um, the defense headquarters are able to find the perpetrators of this crime and bring them to justice. That's all we can take on this segment. We'll come back with our next topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. to stay with us and moving on now to our next topic so civil society rights group and others have lambasted the accountant general of the federation commissioners of finance of the 36 states of the federation and other government officials for choosing to hold a workshop in the united kingdom at a time when the economy is experiencing it's experiencing a major downturn some nigerians are saying that it is the height of financial recklessness and insensitivity to the economic situation of our country. What are your thoughts on this? You can call us on 081-076-41679, You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. All right. So let me come to you now. Before we raise down hmm. on these guys, let's also look at it in different ways. Um, part of the perks of office is mm -hmm. training mm -hmm. workshops you started even it. in the private um in the private sector oh, you God. see um md going for a workshop you see the managers mm -hmm. traveling to the uk dubai going for some kind of training here and there i mean it happens all the time you know <laughs> <laughs> i am genuine because i'm going to dubai tomorrow mm. for a conference but the truth is these things happen both in the private and public mm. sectors so because uh, public sector officials decided to go to the UK for a workshop, everybody's screaming and shouting. Hmm. Let me come to your marker. What are your thoughts on this? Let me start with saying, hmm. <laughs> and then when you said, uh, you called the names of the people that lambast them, and you said others. Others is a marker or a queen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My full chest. Let me, let's start with um, this question. What's the exchange rate um, to Naira, Naira to pounds now? Does anybody mm -hmm. know? As of yesterday, it was 1,600 Naira. Exactly. It, 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 Do you know the hardship we're facing in this country? People, do, people can't even afford bread. Even bread people were threatening to go on strike yeah. two, three weeks ago. No, bread. And then someone carried 30. How many people? 36. To go to work, to go oh, and do what training. That's so insensitive of, of them, right? Of the accountant general, one. Secondly, I learned that. In fact, I even got more upset when I found out that the training was just for four and a half, not even up to five hours a day. What are they doing there? They so what happens, to, so I heard that the training starts at 10 yeah. or 11 and ends at uh, 2.30. Yeah. So what happens after so, so, so That means the, the training is not that important. Amata. My, my, no, I'm coming. Let me, let me land because land. I'm upset about this. Yeah. 
public training. <laughs> what happens to the government setting up facilities, training facilities in Nigeria, especially the public sector, especially what is going on and how we're trying to save money and save costs for the nation, right? What happens with us, state government and federal government, setting up facilities where you can come and sit down and train? You don't even need to. So, because I read somewhere where people were saying that the, facil the facilitators can be brought, it's cheaper for the facilitators brought into Nigeria. Yeah. They don't even need to come. We don't want to spend that money for facilitators to come. We can pay them small money. They will stay there. We sit down in the class they online. Talk. What has COVID-19 taught us? Mm -hmm. Zoom. We learn that thing. Go for tea break. Go for lunch break. Go for another tea break. From morning to night. What will you do training? You say people are brought. You can do training for, for okay. five half hours. Who does that? Okay. Point taken. But you see, these are things that are already in the budget. Before Naira, before Naira became 1,600 or 1,000, these are things that are already in the budget. So the money is already there. Nobody's going to go and change any money for anything. That's one. Mm. Secondly, these are part of the perks. I remember I've gone to a few meetings of these, um, like these labor perks. unions. Listen, labor unions. And the only thing these guys look forward to are international trainings. I mean, as a government official, I can't get, I can't get, a, I might not be able to get a house, get a car, get all those nice perks, private sector people get. But as a government official, one thing you are guaranteed is that you'll get rice for every party you do, and you might get an international training. So this is a major part of being a public officer, especially at that level. So and so why are we now making look as if because as if you, Amaka, you don't go for international conferences. As if you and I don't travel to London, UK for one, no, one no conference. Pay, no, no, pay, no pay with taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. No pay. We need to be sensitive to the plights of, of the common man, of the taxpayers. No, but nobody should use my, my, my money and be uh, uh, doing so jamboree that they are doing training to four and a half hours. If they are told me that this, they were on this training from morning to night, eh, that they were not even sleeping, it was back to back, they were just giving it to them to not come back and come and restructure the economy. <laughs> oh, it will make sense to me. You're closing training by 2.30. What are oh, you doing? Can we verify that that's the time? But let me no, come no, down. No, 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 just verify. I was not asking you on the other side of it. Yeah, Hima. Hima. Go. Mm. Hima, so, please, I want to hear. I just want to help Morel to redefine what training is oh, okay. uh, in Nigeria. Pets. Just as she I said it's a yeah. peck of office. Mm. And when it's abroad training, it's small it's work, it's a peck money. <laughs> you go out after the training, vacationing. Mm -hmm. African countries and their leaders, whenever they go, and then they disgrace themselves first. Mm -hmm. They will carry cars that is enough to pay for their debts to the countries that they are borrowed from and use it for their presidential, whatever, their fleet there. Yeah. They will stay in the hotels that the fee is enough to clear the debts of you know, or, or, or change the education policy of their country to do all the day day. Only a few heads, very blockheads, will be the one taking pictures without thinking of the long-term consequence of this in the eyes of the Dubai people. Yeah. They will see our people come for training. Four hours training, like Kamaka yeah, said, that you can not... do on Zoom. They will see them land there. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, oh, there's a conference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nigeria <laughs> will. <laughs> continue, continue. Nigerians, they yeah. have left their country. That they are on uh, hospital, yeah. Abbey, uh, uncivilized, uncivilized oh, yeah. place to come and look at lights. Yeah. Because what does Dubai have? There's nothing natural. Everything is artificially built. So we don't have it. We come and look at slides, lights, water, okay. all of that. Build Build this. Build this. You. Wait now. And we say we are training. You know, I agree that if you can afford the vacation, mm -hmm. it's from your money. It's not the vacation. You, no, no, wait now. If you it can is. afford it, mm. you can go from your money. But under the civil service, we should redefine what training is. Mm -hmm. Training is for you to be better at your work, not mm -hmm. to be able to say, because I have reached director level, we, are, we were the ones, we have reached the special ones that can now go and do something that, you know, you should bring, they say, mad person, no, they look himself. Now, in family members, they look up. The way I always say these things is different. You know, it means that, uh, what's the name with this big one in Abuja? I don't want to advertise any hotel. Mm. That all the world leaders, when they come to Nigeria, would like to mm. stay in. Yeah. It's not fit enough for us mm -hmm. to have our holiday. Mm. Because the dollar that we are converting is more, it's important that we use She's that dollar. Holiday. She's calling that holiday. That is cash. It is. It's not, this will not be training now, Maka. We not, I just don't want to be direct. There's no training there. You see that four hours, appear in class, mark present. <laughs> go into the market and shop gold. 
Go to Dubai. Let Dubai know Nigeria have come. And you know what? We like to make statements. Whether we will come back or hungry, it doesn't matter. First, let me go. How, how can I go to Dubai and come back and not buy gold? Okay, I'll come. You know? like, I'll come. Mm. So I'll answer you. Mm. Let me go to Dubai. Both of them have said everything I was going to say. <laughs> but I was going to ask. Mm. You know, sometimes maybe we, we are not well educated or exposed. I would like if Mariah can help us with this. How many times have people come from America to do training in Nigeria and stay Tanks. in Nigeria with their people? None. How many of them have come from the UK? None. Uh -huh. We have Dubai hotels. The Dubai? We have hotels. After all, Nigeria, our, in Nigeria, we have natural tourism. I'll, what I'll, is it? Let me that, answer that question. Why are they not coming? Okay. Let me, let me, let me give an answer. Mm. Now, those abroad can come to Nigeria if they are on a mission to learn about culture, uh, really wait, so that, that, that's wait, what we have to, wait, that's wait, what we have to offer wait, today. Let me They'll come you. here and have conferences on culture. They'll come and worship our gods in uh, Orisha. They'll go and worship in the uh, Osho Osho Mu Festival. They'll come here because that is what we are offering. They are doing the Abroad, head of no you are trying to learn heritage. financial markets, how to see better ways of doing things. Is it possible? It's very possible that the ah. AGF has um, organized some people within oh, the oh, wait, American wait, stop, 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 stop. Please, I want to talk to you now. Please, please, she's breaking my heart. Let her speak. No, no, no. I'm saying we don't have to end up now. We don't have to end up now. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 but the point is, people come here for different things that they are seeking knowledge in different areas. Mm. It could be culture, it could be heritage. I'm asking the one that they are government friends. No, no, no. I'm telling you, the one that they are government No, our own is different. This is not on trial. I'm asking the ones that their government sent them to Nigeria. Exactly. That used their mission. They are taxpayers' money. They could have to come to Nigeria. You're talking about personal travel that many Nigerians also do themselves. Okay, we so that's, that. we don't know because I it does know. not happen. Well, well, and well, the they, thing is that it should. I know the Brazilian if government an, sends their own people here. Anyway, for the, if it should have been, come here. I would have liked an exchange yes. of... Then we can have a I want to answer because the reason why I the say this, you have me the reason me. why I'm coming this way is that mm. I believe that as a country we can't do everything on our own. Mm. There has to be collaboration. Do you understand? Exactly. But it has to be collaborations. Remember, a few weeks ago when we discussed when the MBA was saying that people who studied law in the UK can mm. come and what did they say? And practice. And come practice, and practice yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah, no, no. The uproar. Thank God for our Nigerian job. lawyers. Exactly. Yeah. Thank God for our Nigerian lawyers. But you know, if that conversation was. No, each yes. we could do it. Cut across. Yeah, both sides. When our Nigerian um, educated lawyers, lawyers can, can go, go and practice there, mm -hmm. the thing is, we still see ourselves as a country that is less than, and we are not there. Mm -hmm. Honestly, we are much. We are. We, much we've, we've, we've grown to a point where we can. I mean, they take our lawyer, uh, They take our doctors. They take our nurses. They take our teachers. Yeah. So we know what we have. This thing is solely, so it's not, a, I'm, I'm using this to debunk that it's about training. It's not about training. Holiday? It's about these perks that you're talking about. Yeah. Holidaying. There's nothing wrong with holidaying as a group. Every month, mm -hmm. put one cook, um, your asusu, be so putting uh, For the contributions troops. and saying, you know what, at the end of the year, we'll, I would like to take our uh, 36 commissioners abroad for a holiday. Put it together and, and, do, and that do that out of your own personal whatever. Right. But then is it not such an embarrassment that the group of people we are talking about are commissioners of finance. Yes. Let me take this no, call. No, don't take Let it. Let me take this call. Commissioners of finance that should know better. We are talking about our money and our economy. One second. Let me take a call. If they were, Good morning, you're live. If they were agriculture. Good morning. I have a call from K2. Mr. Festus, go ahead, please. Yeah, long time. I can't hear you. Hey, you are trying to defend them. That Maybe they can hear him at home. Hello? Hello? I can't hear you, Mr. Festus. It's difficult to hear you. Okay, all right. So, that's still reply. So, I'm coming. I'm, the reason why I wanted to reply you because the truth is that, you in fairness, to... in fairness, mm -hmm. um, I have personally always frowned at all these international trips, especially for conferences, especially because I'm, I'm one of those people that believe that. We are part of the problem. Mm. Changing dollar, the, the, the small dollar, so changing naira, the small naira, the, the dollar we have, you're going to have it to change um, to dollars. So I've always been one to frown at these things. And over the years, I've been one to say, listen, why don't we have these conferences in Nigeria? Mm. But I am going to Dubai for a conference tomorrow. And that's probably why she was telling, mentioning Dubai here. Mm. Because the truth <laughs> is that you to I'm, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm attending that mm. conference specifically because I hope to meet other managing directors 
who are women like me and network. Mm. Now, if they had done it in Nigeria, I would have been so happy. Mm. But fortunately, unfortunately, yeah, it's been be happening. It would be cheaper for me mm. because it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. So for me to go to Dubai is mm. I have a choice to make that, okay, do I miss an opportunity mm. to network with other managing directors that can actually be financially beneficial to my station? Mm. Or do I just hope to go and see them in the office where they might not have, have my time, but in that kind of place, we'll have the time. So there are different reasons for different seasons. When I was not a managing director, I noticed myself putting anybody giving me money to go and do conference. I wouldn't go. Mm. But now I have a role that I feel is beneficial. So it's the reason why I have decided to go with the late women to go for the conference. So yeah, there are different reasons. That's for yeah, me personally, yeah, privately. Yeah, but... Now, going back to the government AGF official, mm. I'm going to go on a break. <laughs> when we come back, mm. we continue. I, hope I, need to to respond. I need to respond to what you just said. Uh, please, respond. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still talking about the Accountant General who took all the 36 um, commissioners of finance to uh, the UK for a conference. UK is just they like going to get you. UK is just like going to get you. It's like six hours. It's not yeah, a yeah. Why are you guys making it up? Yeah. Well, when I took, so when I took, I took not to go to get you. Oh, yeah. so remember when I first took the story, I taken the story in the paper as when it first mm -hmm. came out, mm -hmm. and I realized it's the same AGF that was involved in the Better Edu case. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she was the one that, you know, it seemed like she was calling out a, you know, a financial uh, misdemeanor. No, much mis more than that. Yes. A misappropriation. Yes. So you would think That's she would no know better. better than to make this sort of goof. You know, we all said, ah, better it was goof. goof. But this one, you know, so for her, it's not a goof. It's deliberate. So what message is she trying to send, really? Yes. And I said, as before we went up, I said also to commissioners of finance. Finance. None of them could this. say to her, Madam, I don't think this is, this is the right time. Right no, no, right no. Look at the amount of money that when you reach their turn. Mm -hmm. And Wait. then, apart from that, when, reach when they went to the UK, yeah. the, the UK. part of the UK that they yeah. went, yeah. YK told us that is the highbrow Kensington. area. Kensington. 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 It's only where the Royal, Royal, the Royals, that's where they stay. Yeah. That is where these people okay, went. So, so, my so you can imagine how much pounds is being spent. So let me ask you a question. Nimo, let me ask you a question. Yes, Mo. Let us, hypothetically speaking, <laughs> say that you are a commissioner of finance from Lagos State. Mm. Would you reject that trip? I would even make sure it doesn't happen. Mm. I will make you, sure. Yes, Nima, me. Will not go for this. I will make sure it doesn't happen. Mm. Reason is because you give you a, a me, I know what is happening on ground. Yes. Mm. I can, if she was the one that called out better I do, mm. then we should be careful. You remember the, commi the person in charge of account, I think the age, was it the accountant general then, on that boy? It okay. was being investigated till the end of that tenure for 180 billion that went our wall on all of us. Today we never see the money. Mm. We have dug ground, we have searched up, we have searched cupboards there everywhere. Yeah. We've not seen the money. <laughs> you know, that money have gone. And I heard it was a bleep bleep bag. I'm trying to get the details, but you know, my, my internet is terrible. Mm. That person was inside finance. Why is it these finance people? people. Who should know better? Because if, if I was in the Ministry of uh, uh, the Ministry of Justice, for instance, I would say it's because it's only English I, I know how to read. Mm -hmm. I don't know money. You are the people who gives us these figures yeah. every day of how you know the SBS has released today. Uh, inflation rate is this and that. Naira is falling. It's going up. It's, you have the facts. You put together this thing. You have the numbers. You know what it cost. It will cost us. Mm -hmm. But you'd rather take your own share when it's reach your turn than to do the right thing. If you don't have the... If somebody in the Ministry of... Not works, works the same money. In the Ministry of Health, for instance, stupidly wakes up to the outside, they are just doctors. They don't know money. Mm. They don't know numbers. Mm. They know nothing. But you, who are in the business of it, mm -hmm. justifying this trip is the, is the height of insensitivity. Yeah. And I think if, if they are so found the, for... The if account. we investigate any money on that, watch. So the one... The person better you're trying, I do the AGF, better the, Um... Accountant General of the Federation, yeah. Alaji Ahmed Idris, over the alleged 80 billion missing. Thank okay, you. That, 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 that 80 billion, we have not seen it. Too. Let me take this call. Good morning, you're live. Mm. Boniface. Hello? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. I greet you, the ladies. We greet you too. Good morning. 
I want to go back to data issue, please. Don't be offended. I it's your view. This was from my corner. I'm going to go ahead. It's your view. Let it count. I want to say to the two ladies at the back there, please. Whatever is good is good, even when nobody is supporting. And anything that is bad is bad, even when the whole world supported it. So the two ladies there, please, I don't know if you by name. I give you people kudos. But the lady who is saying that the, that the soldier should show a uh, show of force is because it didn't happen to you. So let me tell you what happened. Two families from Jose went to the same data to visit one of their own who is sick, who is hepatitis B patient. They were killed in this incident that, is, that, that, that happened there. So are you not saying that they are guilty? Are you not saying that they are they, they, they involved in killing the sick soldiers? Soldiers are be killing people more across this very country. What happened to them? The soldiers have been killed by Boko Haram and even other places. Have you ever seen this show that let soldiers go there and wipe the whole community? No, please, you shouldn't be said. For the first time, me, ma'am, hearing this kind of nonsense from you. For the first time, I'm hearing evil statement from you. And I pray that what you wish other people will come back to your family and come back to you as well. And yeah, I think somebody should have cut that line yes. off. Yes, that, that's just that was, necessary for to go that long. Um, so we are empowered so with soldiers. Morale, so just a minute. It's, the cause goes back to him. I'm Muslim. I know what it is. The empower, we empower the soldiers every day against terrorists, against bandits. We have not even been able to stem them. I don't want we to had to do the NDDC to stem what we suffered under the, uh, in the Niger Delta over time. Kidnapping and all of this. It's starting now, and we're saying... We're justifying or we're finding it easy because we didn't see the cops. I'm looking at the pictures. I would maybe post them yeah. of how the bodies turned out. Yeah. Let, 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 let's drop that for a second because I want us to go back mm -hmm. to this topic. I don't no want us problem. to dwell on that. Yeah. But you see, there's a problem not addressed okay. because as I was saying, when I, when I was doing my intro, I was saying that this is um, the funds for these international trips are already allocated for in the budget. These are things like a company says, this is the amount of putting aside for this kind of training. Now, maybe somewhere along the line, companies are making profits, but the money had already been allocated. I'm just giving an example. So the money is there. Now, she has not done anything illegal because the budget is there. So it's not the illegality of traveling. It's the, the, um, it's the moral part of it, of just the moral justification that is it right in this economic uh, situation? No, no, she, she cannot even use that because mm, the better mm. case. Was, it was not illegal, it was just due process. Yes, so yes. she, more due than anybody, due process. She, 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 she's yeah. in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. You, but yeah. you don't it's have to saying So it goes back to what Nima said earlier. Should we therefore redefine mm. what training should we look should like? Do. Because international exactly. trips are in the government, they're in the budget, exactly. they're in the budget yeah. that's not approved. Yeah, but then the training, it, it's within, see, even if that um, it's, with, uh, it's been approved in the yes. budget, it's, what was approved in the budget was training, right? Mm -hmm. It's within um, her capacity and her office to decide so this that this year, the training should be done in Nigeria. Thank you. We can choose Abuja or whatever. We need you, as in, we need to do on-hand training and yeah. see how we can save money, blah, 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 blah. And even if they now decide that, okay, we, 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 we might not do this, as in, this might be extreme. Mm. You can pick out three of the commissioners of finance it's to okay, say, go. Or even she and maybe two other people, let them go and hear what these facilitators want to tell them, that they cannot tell them uh, uh, via Zoom or online. Eh? That's the same thing. Because it's not like it's a workshop thing that they are going to go and learn or they need to be in a particular environment or something. Whether they like it or not, it's, it's, it's their ears that they're going to use yeah. and their eyes. So, so at least they will have picked like two or three people to go and yeah. do that but and the come back of and money has changed yeah. now. We just agreed. Do you understand? Um, so, it's within, so, 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 so it's within her office and capacity yes. mm. to make those decisions to say, okay. we can step down right now. Yes. We can do this tomorrow. It's a moral decision on our own part, on yeah. own okay, part right? As a leader. So, so we, I was going yeah. to say the amount of money as well that you said had already been budgeted, allocated, yes. allocated for it, mm. cannot be the same amount because of the exchange rate. It's possible that maybe, for example, um, they can remove Esther codes, they can remove other things just to make, just, I, mean, I don't want to speak for government, mm. but the point is that, Money mm. had been allocated. Mm. Now, the issue is that 
Do we therefore continually discourage international trips for government officials? Yes. Because these things are part of it. It's part of the tightening of belts. When they yes, say we should now, tighten belts. Yeah, 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 so what does, yes. Mean, yes. what does it mean? What does it mean? These are the areas people. that they should that the government should look at in cutting yeah. costs. So when they say tightening of belts, what does it mean for different this is people? It. They can use the money to buy rice yeah. and <laughs> different food and distribute MDAs. to people. Let's give you comments. Yeah. Go ahead, on social media, do you have any comments? No, not on this one. It's on the old topic. Everybody's talking about the military one. But we have to be... The truth is that... Um, I mean, I'm trying as a moderator to see all the sides mm. and understanding the kind of person, because with, from the Better Edu's um, case, we see the AGF as somebody who um, is sensitive to issues of misappropriation, issues of, mass, uh, of, of, due of, of, of due process and mm. ensuring that things are done properly. So she, from, it's, it's, clear for us, it's important for us to clarify that she didn't do anything legal. Mm. Yeah. Our, international trips are approved and she's allowed to go. Four hours, five hours, that's a different conversation. But can she, as you said earlier, make a decision to say, you know, just because of what is the, the, the going on in the economy, we're no more going. Now, should other power states, other MDAs, yeah. other ministries begin to review their budget, even though it's been approved, do we now say, don't do international trips because of what's going on. Is that, do you think it is, do you think you would do the same thing if you were in that situation I mean, as a minister? Our, yeah, even our president has reduced the number of people, has told us the I number of people him. that can go and enter. And even he is making sacrifices. Does not mean that the constitution well, does not allow. To, listen, to, does not, commission no, 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 listen. What I'm trying mm -hmm. to point out is, is low, low. The, uh, the president himself is constantly showing us in different ways how he's tightening his belt, reducing costs of yeah. governance. And you know, there was one time, on this table, you talked about there's a whole theme for this administration, which is renewed hope. How can only be the, the president be the only one carrying this renewed hope? You don't see it in the MDAs. Yeah. You don't see it in ministries and things like that. That's what we're talking about. There's a singular message of tightening our belts. What are you doing in your different parasitals to show that you have aligned with this tightening of belt? Just the president can't do it. Yeah. And if you don't get it, if you be appointed by this administration and you don't get the message, should you then be part of the administration? Okay. If you don't know that now more than ever is the time that we cannot afford to use foreign exchange for trips like this. When there are alternatives, remember, right. we're not saying don't have trainings at all, but there's a cheaper way to do this, okay. and do that, simple. Okay, yes. sir, Chocos was says, you people should allow mommy and children do holiday in peace, Jai. <laughs> they should shall bring sweet and chocolate for the hungry Nigerians. I have back to go, let me let them okay, okay, yeah, so the, my, my final word is, yeah, is that for you to be appointed to any position, as you know, because you, you're, you're in a position of power, um, you should have leadership skills. Mm. You should have initiative, certain initiative, right? And you should also make sure that if you're going to even spend that taxpayer's money, that there's value. Yeah. That value is gotten. It's not just for you to just say, oh, you just I'm sign sure it off value. that they should go. Yeah. No, not for and half hours value. And then well, part of the things is to go and visit the Nigerian High Commission in London and everything. No, it's not just for when you're a leader, it's not just for you to sign off on stuff. You have to also make sure that that we're getting what value. I'm, as you're reading it, I'm not seeing tourists at all. They are going I on the They went to Nigeria. They went to Dubai. They went to high commission. They are on the tourists. No, we have 36 states in Nigeria. 36 commissioners. Of them are touring the world. So they, they went with, with the age. I mean, I don't, the think, the they went, I don't think they went with an mm. overblown. No, the no, and the high commission, are they going to get the figures that will help us in reaching statistics? Anyways, it is you that know. The point is that, but Nima is right in the sense that we need to redefine these things because mm -hmm. of our economic realities of today. We obviously need to redefine these things. Mm. Private people also are tightening their belts because mm -hmm. have, not, not everybody... Even the is, president. Even the, even the president too has started tightening his belt, but even needing to tighten it further because I hear he's going to be traveling this week. But the point mm. is that we all just need to make sure that the renewed hope is trickled down from top to bottom, meaning that ministries, MDAs, parts, everybody, most agencies must all... Um, tighten up their belts. All those international trips should be cut down. Nigerians must see the body language of government and governance Public that they are service. also tightening their belts so that we can actually believe in the renewed hope agenda. That's all we can take on today's show. Hope you have learned a few things as we have. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.